let's talk about decision making because everybody makes decision whether it's uh, business related or personal you have had to make a decision before you have uh, had to choose between driving or taking the bus or even eating home or going to eat out okay and right now you probably are deciding whether you should subscribe to this channel or not that one you can decide at the end of this video but in order to make effective decision there are things that you need to consider some of them are relevant and some aren't relevant those that are not relevant you don't make decision based on those okay so in this exercise we have an uh, management as a task of um, identifying these costs as relevant or not relevant and the two cases we have case one and we have case two and uh, as an uh, accounting student you need to identify these costs whether they are um, whether each of them is relevant or not relevant and the exercise requires me to copy the information above onto my answer sheet and place an X in the appropriate column for that reason I have copied and pasted um, this information right here okay so we are going to answer this one by one which ones are relevant and which ones are not relevant but before we do that I want to draw your attention to the meanings of relevant and not relevant and other important thing called constraint that you need to know okay so we, when we talk about relevant in terms of business decision decision making in business it brings about changes okay so whether your what do we call it whether your assess is increasing or decreasing that is what relevant will cost you okay your sales will be increasing or decreasing or your cost will be increasing or decreasing okay no one way or the other relevant thing brings change okay and the cost associated with this is avoidable okay if you go with the other alternative okay if you go with the other alternative of course it's avoidable that makes it relevant irrelevant is opposite of relevant it doesn't bring about any change it stays the same and if it's going to stay the same whether you choose option a or option b then it's irrelevant it doesn't matter which way you choose okay and cost is unavoidable you can't avoid the cost imagine you deciding whether you should drive or you should take the bus and the cost is going to be the same okay doesn't matter whether you drive or take the bus it doesn't matter you can choose whatever you want to do it wouldn't matter and when you talk about constraint constraint prevent you from having more of what you want okay and what a company wants is to have more profits and pay less expenses okay so in this case constraint will reduce your profits okay but it will increase your expenses okay so if you have a machine and it's you know giving you less profits but um, uh, costing you more expenses that uh, machine becomes a constraint to the success of the company so you need to pay attention to these three keywords okay now let's read case one okay and then uh, <clears throat> identify those that are relevant and those that are irrelevant okay if it is relevant i am going to highlight it with the red if it's irrelevant i'll probably highlight it with the other color okay so now in the first case it said the company chronologically has no idle capacity in the model o model old and the old model b100 machine is the company's constraint okay so uh, the model, this model is the company's constraints. Okay, so it's preventing them from having more of what you want. Either the cost, either it's making them pay more of their cost or, you know, resulting in producing less or bringing less revenue. That is how why this old model has become a constraint. Okay management is considering purchasing a model b 300 okay so this is relevant this model b 300 we are purchasing we are adding a machine okay to use in addition to the company's present b 100 okay good so uh, in addition to that the old model machine will continue to be used to 
capacity as before with a new model machine being used to expand production. Okay, so pay attention here. The new machine is going to, when we talk about expand, meaning production is increasing. So we are going to increase production. That is expand. And if we are increased production, what is increasing? Our product cost is increasing. Because if we are going to make more product, then we will need more direct material. We need more direct labor. We need more variable manufacturing overhead and then fixed manufacturing overhead. Okay, so this is what we are going to assume right now that these are relevant. Okay, these are relevant. Good. This will increase the company's production. Okay, that's what I've, I've stated here. And sales. Okay, so sales is also increasing and sales is a revenue. So I'm just listing them here. Okay, sales is a revenue right here. Okay, so we know this is also relevant. Okay, the increase in volume will be large enough to require increase in fixed selling expense. Okay, so this is also relevant. Fixed selling expense is changing. Remember, anything that brings about change is relevant. Okay, so that is relevant. Fixed selling expense. Okay, what is? And in general, administrative. Okay, general administrative overhead is also relevant right here but not in the fixed manufacturing overhead, aha, okay? So if you notice, I listed fixed manufacturing overhead here because it's, it is a product cost, okay? But here, the company is specific, like, okay, no, fixed manufacturing overhead is not going to be affected. So I'm going to cancel fixed manufacturing overhead. It's not being affected, okay? And I'm going to select it here or highlight it here, fixed manufacturing overhead. So this becomes irrelevant. Okay, because it is not changing, so irrelevant. Okay, so after reading, now I have pretty good idea of what should be relevant and what shouldn't be relevant. Notice though that not everything is stated uh, clearly in this, um, what do we call it, in this case though. So let's use this information to try answering this question. Okay, so we know we are, we are doing case one, okay. So with case one, it says revenue relevant. Yes, it is, because it says right here that says it's going to increase. So we know our revenue is increasing. And anything that brings changes is, a, is relevant okay, because it's bringing change. It's increasing our sales. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to indicate with X. Okay. What about direct material right here? Direct material is relevant because if production is expanding or production is increasing, then we will need more direct material to produce more. So that becomes relevant, okay? Direct labor as well. We will need to work extra hours to produce more products, okay? So that also becomes relevant. Well, now variable manufacturing overhead, that also is part of product cost. It's only fixed that we were told that is not relevant. So variable manufacturing overhead is also relevant. What about depreciation, okay? Depreciation is not relevant. This is why it's not relevant. The old machine, we are keeping the old machine, okay? So assume the old machine, we pay depreciation of $1,000 every month, okay? Because we are keeping it, the depreciation, we are still going to pay the same depreciation for the old machine. Nothing is changing. If we were to sell it, then we are getting rid of the $1,000. And that becomes a change, that becomes relevant. But in this case, we are still going to continue to pay that same depreciation. So it's not relevant in this decision making. That is the old machine, okay? If it's not relevant, the book value is also not relevant because book value is um, the historical cost minus depreciation or accumulated depreciation that gives you the book value, okay? And if depreciation is still going to stay the same, then book value wouldn't even matter. Okay, now disposable value. What is disposable value? Disposable value is what you get, whether gain or loss on the sale of product or when you get rid of the product. Okay, we'll get rid of the machine. Then in this case, we are not getting rid of the machine. So we are not, we don't know again, we are not going to consider any loss. So that becomes irrelevant, okay? We will only consider that if we were getting rid of the machine. 
And in this case, we are keeping the old machine, which is B100. Pay attention that B100 is the old machine and B300 is the new machine, okay? So the old machine, uh, the depreciation is irrelevant. When it comes to the new machine, okay, we're talking about market value. So assuming we bought the machine for, uh, let's say $24,000, that is the historical cost. And okay, the market value is $30,000. Okay, this is market value. If we were to sell it at a market value right now, we will have a profit of 6,000. So there is a change, it's relevant. We need to consider that, okay, if we were to sell it right now, what is, what is our market value? Okay, what is, the, what is it worth? It's worth 30,000. So that becomes relevant. It's relevant to decide that, okay? Now, fixed manufacturing overhead, okay? It was listed here, fixed manufacturing overhead is irrelevant, okay? It's not going to change. So I'm going to indicate that with X in the not relevant column. A variable selling expense, was it stated anywhere? No, it wasn't, okay? But this is how you will know, okay? Now, variable selling increases or decreases based on the number of units you sell. So if you sell, uh, let's assume you sell 100 units, okay? This is 100 units and it's worth $10. Selling expense is $10. Okay, because your number of units is increasing because sales, sales will increase. So we will go up 200 units times 10. So that means your cost will be 2,000 instead of 1,000, okay? So because sales is increasing, variable selling expense also is increasing. So that becomes something that you need to pay attention to. My sale is increasing, how much will I, my variable expense or selling expense also increase? Okay, where will that be? Okay, will I have enough money to cater or to take care of that? Okay, so that becomes relevant because it's variable, it goes up and down depending, something is pulling it. Variable, it depends, uh, it's, in, it's dependent on the number of units you sell. Okay, so if the number of units you sell increases, variable expense is also going to increase. And if it's increasing, then it's making a change, okay? It brings about changes, so that makes it relevant, okay? Now, fixed selling expense, okay? We read here, okay, read here that it says enough to require increase in the fixed selling expense. So fixed selling expense is increasing. That is also relevant. Okay, anything that is increasing or decreasing, as long as it's making a change, it is relevant. If it's not making any change, it's not relevant. Okay, so now let's go to general administrative overhead. We read it somewhere here. It says, and in general administrative overhead, that is also increasing. So I highlighted those that are relevant with red. Okay, so I know as soon as I see them, I know that yes, that is relevant. So I'm going to highlight those ones also with red ink, which is relevant. Let's look at the second scenario, which is case two right here. Okay, so we are going to look at case two and we are going to do, we are going to use the same procedure we use for case one to identify relevant and not relevant. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's see. It says the company, oh, the old model, okay, so the same company, that we are assuming in this case, okay, the old model B100, as I know, is not the company's constraint, okay? So it's not the company's, it's working perfectly fine, okay? Not the company's constraint. So that's what I'm thinking. If it's not the company's constraint, wh why? What is so hot, okay? But management is considering replacing it with a new module, okay? So this is working perfectly fine, but management want to replace it. So that means it's not a constraint. They are not paying more cost, more expenses. Neither is their profit decreasing, but they still want to replace it. Okay, good. Uh, okay, new machine because of the potential savings in the direct material. Okay, so that tells me that the new model, okay, B300 is going to help them save direct material, okay? So they are going to save direct material, savings in direct material. So now I know 
direct material is uh, what do we call it is uh, relevance okay uh, i should have used the red pen okay let me use the red pen to do that so i know direct material is relevant okay because direct material is increasing uh, the cost is going to decrease because they are going to pay less if they are saving money on direct material it means they are paying less of what they used to pay uh, with the uh, b100 okay and with the new with the new machine okay the model 100 machine will be sold okay so they will sell the model 100 machine so i'm going to use relevant are we going to get a gain or loss on that machine this change will have no effect on production okay so it will have no effect on production. Okay, so production and sales, no effect. So I'm gonna cancel this and circle this. But I have a problem with them. If it's not going to have no, if not going to have any effect on production, what about direct material? That means, okay, all product cost is not going to be affected or change except direct material, okay? So we know product product cost. When you talk about product cost, we have direct material, direct labor, variable manufacturing overhead, and fixed manufacturing overhead. But here, it indicates that direct material they are going to save money on direct material materials. So that that one I know that direct material is relevant. So I'm going to cancel it here. Okay, so it becomes relevant our material is relevant because it's here okay it's here as a what do we call it as relevant okay so because direct material is relevant i'm going to take it out from the production what is it okay and sales is irrelevant it's not going to make any effect on sales okay other than some savings on direct material cost due to less week okay so it has mentioned it here again. So it actually repeated direct material twice. Okay, so you should know that direct material is definitely relevant because they are going to save money on the cost of direct materials. Okay, so let's go ahead and use this information to answer the questions or to indicate whether these are relevant or not relevant. So with sales revenue, we know that it's not relevant because it's not going to have any effect no change on it so that makes it irrelevant so we put the irrelevant here okay so now let's go so we are doing case two right here okay so let's go to direct material direct material we know that they are going to have direct material cost due to so it's going to they are going to have savings when you talk about savings here savings that means if the company pays uh, let's say one thousand dollars in direct materials they are now going to save some money so they are going to pay about seven hundred dollars that is a big change that is a three hundred dollars change and anything that brings about change is relevant okay so we're going to indicate that as relevant direct labor we know that the labor, labor is irrelevant because it says here no effect on production except direct material so direct labor is irrelevant that's not going to circulate and we have variable manufacturing overhead is also irrelevant because it's part of here and now we have uh, depreciation okay depreciation is irrelevant okay and this is why okay let's uh, here we know that the company or the old model is not a constraint okay so that means depreciation is not too much okay they are not paying too much of depreciation and they want to get rid of it if it's not a constraint, then it's working as perfectly as an old machine, okay, or an old one, okay. That means it's almost equivalent, okay. So if we are paying depreciation of, uh, let's say, uh, we use a different number, two thousand dollars, okay, for a month, okay. The new machine coming in is also going to cost us two thousand dollars. So if we get rid of this old machine, this is the new. If we get rid of the old machine, our depreciation is still going to stay 2000. So that is so that's what makes it irrelevant. Okay. If if the, if the old machine were to be a constraint, that means we are paying too much of depreciation. So we are getting a new machine, so we will pay less. But in this case, it's not a constraint. So depreciation wouldn't even matter. 
okay we are going to because because it's the same production we are going to use the same depreciation rate to uh, or to use it on a new machine we are going to use the same depreciation rate so depreciation wouldn't really matter okay so that becomes irrelevant okay and now we have it become relevant then book value is of course also irrelevant okay now let's look at the what do we call it the disposable value for the b100 okay in contrary to case one where we didn't sell uh, we didn't sell the machine in this case we are selling the machine so disposable value, remember, is a gain or loss on the sale of product, okay, or on the machine, gain or loss. So we are going to consider if we are selling it, we will either have a gain or we'll have a loss. Okay, so that is why that becomes irrelevant. If we sell it, are we losing money? Not actually, not many, not necessarily money, but it's an expense, okay, because with cash flow, we are not going to consider that. Okay, but are we losing or are we gaining? okay according to the accounting process and that we will consider that it makes it relevant okay but the market value for the new machine is the same as the case one okay if we are buying the new machine how do we compare that to the market value of, the, of what we are paying okay that also makes it relevant and then let's go to fixed manufacturing overhead okay that's right here irrelevant okay so we're going to put it here irrelevant because it said there is no change on production and now we have fixed uh, variable selling expense. Remember, <clears throat> contrary to case one, where sales, sales are increasing, here, sales is going to stay the same, okay? It's not moving. And because it's going to stay the same, variable selling expense is not going to increase. It's also going to stay the same. Okay, so that makes it irrelevant because we are not going to increase uh, selling expenses, okay? And then we have fixed selling expenses that also is irrelevant in this case. Okay, and then we have general administrative. That one also is irrelevant in this case. Remember, it says it was a general, it made it general that is not going to have effect on production or sales. So anything that has to do with sales, there's no change. There's no change that's going to happen with sales. So that makes everything in, in respect to selling irrelevant because there's no change happening here. Unless it was, unless the case was specific, like, okay, this is what's going to happen, okay? So I hope, I hope this makes sense with case one and case two, okay? So we are going to move on to do actually, to use this, uh, to use this techniques, relevant and not relevant, to answer the next question, okay? <clears throat> which is make or buy. Because I don't want us to spend so much time on this, I've already copied and uh, what we, I've already created a template for this, so we will go past it, okay? Before you make this decision, you need to list what is relevant and what is not relevant, okay? So in this case, we have a Troy Engine Limited manufactured engine, okay, in heavy equipment. The company also produces necessary part, okay? So the company produces the part for the engine, okay, including all the carburetor. Okay, so carburetor is a part of the engine, okay? So you need to pay attention to that. Carburetor is the part, it's a part, okay? And also the supply has offered uh, to sell, I'm not a car expert, but, you know, I know carburetor is a, is, is a part of engine because my brother has told me, but Cody is very expert, is very an expert in when it comes to cars, okay? So carburetor too, so, Someone is offering to sell them carburetors, okay? And the cost will, it will cost them $35 for one carburetor, okay? To evaluate it, so blah, 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 blah. Okay, good. Now, this is how much it will cost them if they buy, okay? Now, this is how much it cost them to make on cost of production, okay? Here, everything here, this is how much it costs them to make it. Okay, so this is it costs them to make. So, well, it costs them, it will cost them $35 to buy the carburetor, or it will cost them $42 to make. Okay, but that is not all. There are things we need to consider. We need to consider relevant and not relevant. Okay, which of these costs, which of all these costs here, 
is relevant and which is not relevant. I written here, okay? Which of them is relevant and which is not relevant. That is what we are going to consider, okay? Good. Remember what I explained from the beginning, okay? If the cost is avoidable, if we go with other alternative, it makes it relevant. If it's not avoidable, then it's irrelevant. So let's look at this, okay? $14 is a direct material, okay? If they decide to buy, are they still going to buy direct material to make carburetors? No, because the carburetors are already made, will already be made before they can. So they will not need any direct material. So are they going to avoid the $14 cost? Yes, they are going to avoid, it's avoidable, okay? And if something is avoidable, a cost is avoidable, it's relevant, okay? So that makes um, this cost direct material relevant of $14, okay? So let's look at direct labor. If someone is making it before they ship it to us, then we are not going to spend, pay labor for, uh, laborers for making the cabritas because we are not making them anymore. So that becomes relevant cost because we can avoid it if we buy the cabritas, okay? So that becomes relevant. What about variable manufacturing overhead, okay? Variable manufacturing overhead, if we, decide to buy them we will we will we can avoid this three dollar cost okay so that also becomes relevant three dollars okay fixed manufacturing overhead traceable okay let's pay attention to this this is serious okay now look we have uh we have everything here six dollars right but there is a little asterisk there okay right here that asterisk it says here says one third supervisory salaries to third depreciation of special equipment, not receive value. Okay, so one third is for supervisor. So one third of six dollars is two dollars, and two third is four dollars. So this one is for supervisor. Okay, and this one is for the special equipment. Okay, remember the equipment is used to produce so many things not only carburetors, okay? So in this case, if we decide to buy them, we are not going to need the supervisor to supervise making the product. So listen, okay? This is the tricky part. If we decide to buy them, we are not going to need a supervisor to supervise making the carburetors. So we are not going to pay $2, okay? That $2 per unit, we are not going to pay. So that becomes relevant. We can avoid that $2 cost. But with the $4 cost, the machine is still there. So we are not going to avoid it, the overhead. We cannot avoid that. So that becomes irrelevant. Okay. Now we have fixed manufacturing overhead allocated. Uh -huh. Allocated means it cannot be traced to the carburetors. Okay. So whether we buy or we don't buy, we still have the cost of $9, which is irrelevant. So that $9 is definitely and clearly irrelevant, okay? That one is irrelevant because whether we buy or not, we're still going to pay for that fixed manufacturing over because it's just an allocation. We have just allocated it to the carburetors making, but it's not necessarily for the carburetors, okay? So that one becomes irrelevant. So now that we have those that are relevant and those that are irrelevant, we are going to use that information to answer the question, how much will it cost us if we make and how much will it cost us if we buy? And we decide whether we should make or buy the carburetors. Notice that the company uh, produces 15,000 units right here, okay? So the company we have right here, 15,000 units. And everything that was here is just per unit, okay? So we are going to use that based on that, we will find per unit and then we'll find the total units, okay? So if we decide to make them, okay, they are costs that we cannot avoid, okay? Those are what we are going to consider in making this decision. So if we decide to make them, we cannot avoid this cost, okay? We cannot avoid this cost either. And we cannot avoid this cost either. And we cannot avoid that cost either, okay? So we are going to add them together to see how much they will cost per unit. So with per unit, 
we are going to have $29 per unit to produce 15,000 units. But how much, uh, how much would that be for 15,000 units? So we take this and multiply by 15,000. Okay, that gives us 210,000. So I'm just going to drag it all the way, okay, and drag it this one here. Okay, so we have the total for the total for the unit 435,000, but per unit is $29. Okay, so considering the relevant and not relevant, it will cost us $29 to make. Okay, what about to buy? Remember, the offer is to we will pay them $35. It will cost us $35. Okay, that is the only thing that is relevant in here. Okay. So $35 per unit. These are not relevant because whether you rebuy or make, we still pay that amount, so it's not relevant, okay? And then we multiply that one by 15,000. Okay, so that's 532,000, okay? So now we are going to compare making or buying, which one will save us money, okay? Which one is better? So obviously you can see that making is better. Okay, so 90,000, making will save us 90,000 of dollars if we make it instead of buying it. So definitely the answer that what we ask here that, uh, okay, so this number one, okay. <clears throat> so price of accepted, should it be accepted? Is no, it shouldn't be accepted because if we make it, we will spend 90,000 less than buying them. Okay, so we know that we are not going to buy it. We are going to make it because it's cheaper than buying the coverages from uh, the, the, the surprise or the offer that we have received. Now we have a different scenario with number two, okay? So number two here, we have a different scenario. We are going to make a different assumption, uh, what do you call it, assumption, okay? So let's see, it says, uh, suppose that is assuming, okay? When it says suppose, we are going to assume. So number two right here, Assuming that if the carburetors were purchased, okay, if we buy the carburetors, okay, instead of making them, okay, Toyota Limited could use the free capacity uh, to launch a new product, okay. So we have where we produce uh, the carburetors, we will use that capacity or that building, okay, so capacity is same as building or the building and the machine, so the factory building, okay, to launch a new product, okay, the segment margin of the new product will be 150,000. So this is a profit, okay? So we use the building to make a profit of $150,000 per year. She try engines limited, uh, accept the offer to the carburetors for $35, show complication, yeah. So if we decide to buy the carburetors instead of making them, okay? We will use the building that we use to make carburetors to make a new product and the profit. So when you said the margin, anytime you see margin is a profit. Okay, and the profit on that segment, okay, will be 150,000. So should we go for it or not? Remember, this is a cost in the future. Okay. This that this is not in tradition, uh, what do we call it? Financial accounting. This is in managerial accounting and economics when we talk about opportunity cost. But this is it's right now invisible cost so that you can just see. So opportunity cost is something in the future, okay, that you are going to get. Okay. When we talk about opportunity cost right here. Okay. Okay, so it's an opportunity that the company should take advantage of 150,000. But if they don't take an advantage of, it becomes a cost. So that is costing the company. Okay, so I am actually going to make this in two different ways and see which one works better. Okay, so let's see here. <clears throat> let's see, if we decide to make it, okay, if we decide to, let's make two scenarios, okay we decide to buy it instead of make it, okay? We decide to buy it instead of make it, okay? So uh, let's see, our making will still stay the same, which is uh, $29, okay? But that is per unit, so we need the total, okay? So the total for making it will be $335, okay? And total for buying it will be this much. 
okay, $525, okay. We are comparing it. So we are going to compare the opportunity cost of 150,000, okay. If we, okay, decide to, because we have decided to buy them and use the building, okay, that profit, okay, because it's the profit coming in, okay, profit is the money coming in. So that will be cash in, okay, cash inflow. Cash inflow is going to reduce the cost of this. Okay. Uh, it's going to increase the cost of making. Okay. Because we are not taking advantage of it, it's going to increase that cost. That is if we decide to buy, uh, to make it. Okay. But let's, let's take to buying them because it says, assuming that we decide to buy them. Okay. So if we decide to buy them, we are having a cash inflow of 150,000, okay? So 150,000, this is our cost, okay? So that 150,000 is cash inflow. So the cash inflow is going to decrease the cost, the uh, annual cost, okay? So 150,000 is going to decrease our annual cost, okay? So the annual cost will be this, will be this one, oh, come on, okay. Will be this one plus this one. Okay, that makes it minus, okay. So that is the difference, okay. So we look, we check the difference, which one will be more expensive. Okay, so the difference is 60,000. Okay, so if we don't take advantage of that, we will, and we still wanna make it, we will, we will be losing $60,000 of money, okay. So this is, when we put the cost or what do you call it, we make, we take advantage of the, we take advantage of the opportunity that is laid ahead of us, that is the profit of 150,000. That's re reduce, is going to reduce our cost if we decide to buy it, okay? It's going to reduce the cost. But if we decide to make it, okay, let's you, I'm going to use the same template and then we see if we will we'll get the same answer. Okay, so I'm going to reference this over here and uh, reference that one too over here and get rid of these ones. Okay, so this is what, if we, if we decide to make them, we will use the building to make a profit of 150,000. And because it's a profit, it's going to reduce our annual cost for buying. And then the buying will reduce to this much, and the difference is 60,000. But let's assume that we want to still make it, okay? Because we want to make it, we are going to lose 150,000. And remember, this is like intangible profit, okay? We haven't seen it yet, but we are going to lose it. That is why it becomes opportunity cost, because it's an opportunity and you are not taking advantage of it, so it becomes cost or expenses. Okay, so if we decide to make it right here, our cost is going to increase by 150,000. So the 150,000 will be here, 150,000. Okay, so we add those two together, this plus that, that gives us that. And this one is going to stay the same for buying. Okay, so we compare the two. So this minus that, that still gives us 50,000. Okay, so if you put the 150 here, then then it has to be minus, it has to decrease the cost. But if you put it for making, it has to increase the cost and you will still have 60,000 as the difference, okay? So what it actually means is here, we need to buy it. If we have an opportunity to save $150,000, then we should buy the carburetors. If we can use the building to make a product that will generate $150,000, so the difference in the favor of purchasing from the outsider is 60,000. That's the difference, okay? That's the cost for how much profit we're going to make. Remember in the first scenario, it's not good, okay? Because we are not going to use the building for anything. It says it has no alternative use for the facility. But in the second scenario, we have an alternative use for the facility, okay? So we are actually making advantage, okay? Taking advantage of that uh, 150,000. 
So we will buy it so we can use the building to make more profits. Okay, good. Now let's look at the third one. I'm not going to do the third one, okay, but pause the video and feel free to try your hands on it, okay? And what you should have for your, for number two, so number two says, recast the above information, okay, right here. Okay, this is what your answer should be, okay? So when you are done, you compare your answer with mine, and if you have any question, just, uh, you know, type it in the comment section, all right? So there are so many ways of doing accounting, and whichever way you choose to do, Keep practicing and good luck on your test.